Amen. But watch the dairy anywhere you can substitute it with uh, substitute milk. Won't you just slide that in there? Look at somebody, boy. They like, no, nah, Pastor, go on and preach. You out of the, you, 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 <laughs> you out of pocket. Go on and preach the message. You just don't be messing with the recipes. <laughs> Hey, man, I know how you feel, because, you know, I make this special dressing. My dressing is fire. My dressing is fire, but, boy, when I substitute it with the non-dairy stuff, folk get to complaining and get me grumpy. I me, folk just, Anne Marie, the only one still like it. Everybody else, oh, no, no, wait, what? Something different, what? It, it's too light, it ain't heavy. Why the pan so light? Amen. But anyway, all right. So, amen. Is that it? Okay. Last week we talked about distractions. Were you blessed by that message? This week we're going to be talking about it at adamandbeliever.com forward slash distractions two part two dot pdf. Look at somebody and say, bad news. Bad news news is a distraction. Bad news. What happened to us? What somebody's doing to us? What the white man did to us? Bad news. But it's a distraction from the good news. The good news in that message was... That not only you, but we all can be saved by what Jesus Christ has done. That's the good news. But you're made up. And to me, if you hear phantom cussing, you got cussing in your head. I mean, that's what I say. Phantom cuss words. Yeah. Bad news is a distraction and bad news will stop you from receiving what God has amen unfortunately there are people in here that when there's something bad going on they pick up the phone to share it with someone and they don't even realize that's changing the person that's listening You're taking their good situation and changing it into yours with bad news. Man, I'm preaching in the house. Yeah, why you want to be a bad news bear? I remember that movie? Anytime somebody come around, they know if I strike up a conversation with this person, and we talk over five minutes, they gonna mention something about this ministry that's wrong. That's a bad news bear. Can I keep preaching? Bad news is discouraging. Isn't bad news discouraging? No matter how good things are going, bad news can ruin it. Our world has just saturated itself with bad news. James 3 and 6. This is why bad news is so bad and can ruin a good moment. Because the tongue is a what? Fire! Fire! Don't tell me that. My ear just burned. Why are you saying that to me? The tongue is a fire. A world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. That it does what? Defileth the whole body. And, oh, this is the worst part. Set it on fire the course of nature. So things were going to turn out a certain way until you open your mouth. Once you open your mouth, you change the course of what was getting ready to occur. (laughs) 
and it can start off so good. But because that tongue is a fire, <laughs> it set it on fire the course of nature, and <laughs> that ain't all it does. It don't just set, a, the, uh, set on fire the course of nature. It is set on fire of hell. Your words can ruin everything. One emotional outburst can ruin. Yeah, me and the Elder was talking in the office, and I was telling him, I said, "Do you know some folks believe that no matter what they say and do, everything's gonna be okay?" There's a new group of people, Elder, in this world. A new kind of creation. A new species of Negro. <laughs> that exists. It's a whole new breed. They believe that they can say and do anything. And everything is going to be okay. But the Bible says that your tongue is changing nature and is set on fire of hell. Oh, I'm like that woman on the weeds. Don't nobody break me. What's the rest? No bad news. She had enough. Many hear bad news and instantly accept it. Oh, gosh. Oh, God. This is that same species. That same species that I mentioned earlier. As soon as they hear bad news, it's on. They believe it. They accept it. Not only that, they chime in on it. Mm-hmm. Because, mm-hmm. Without considering alternatives, maybe there's another side of this story. Before I, my emotions get caught up, maybe there's another side. So maybe I need to consider an alternative. Or optimism. Well, maybe, that's, maybe it's not that bad. Maybe that's not what they meant. Maybe they didn't mean to do it. Maybe they're doing something. Maybe whatever. Optimistic. Having hope. Or considering the validity of it. Maybe you're lying. Maybe you're lying because you have a problem. And this is not the first time you've done this. And it seems like whenever something's going on, it's going on around you. So maybe you're lying. First Timothy 5 and 13. Man, I'm preaching today on bullet two. And with all they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house. And not only idle, but tattlers also. Man, the Bible said tattlers. As in tattletale. Tattlers also and what? Busy bodies. Speaking things which they what? Art not. The enemy loves to bring bad news to us to distract us from the good news of the gospel. Listen to this. Man, you was praying for a church. Somewhere to go where you get the truth. God opened the door. Got you here. Your family start learning. You start learning. Things start getting better. Got you a good job. Things got good. Things start feeling good. Things start looking good. And then who sits by you on that Sunday? A bad news bear. And everything I say, under their breath. Mm. <laughs> and before service is over, uh, what is your family doing after service? Bad news. Everything was good. Everything.
everything was good. And bad news came to distract you from everything being good. Listen to this. The devil can't do nothing with good. If it's good, he can't do nothing. He can't change good. He, good is from God, not from him. Goodness is from the Holy Spirit. It's a fruit of the Spirit. So when it's good, it's not the devil. So the devil has no power against good. So he has to bring you bad news to change good. And here's the sad part, Sister Amy. Good don't change. You changed. Now you got to watch good from a distance because you wild out. But good keeps being good because good is from God. Am I preaching in here? Did I, I felt the anointing on that part. The enemy loves to bring it though because if he can bring bad news, and distract us, man, he'll mess up our good. God's news should outweigh the bad. So if bad comes to you, good news should outweigh it. I hear what you're saying, and that may be how you're feeling. But let me give you the good news. The good news of what God is doing. The good news of what I've seen happen in my life. It's going to outweigh the bad. Proverbs 25 and 25. As cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. Good news. Look at somebody and say good news. Let me show you the effects of bad news. The, these are the original bad news bears. They were called the children of Israel. And... <laughs> <laughs> they the OGs. Amen. Numbers tells us the story 13 where God came to Moses and said, Moses, I need you to get some spies from the tribes. And I need these spies, he said, to go and camp out and spy out the land that I'm going to give to y'all. Now, the key to that is God said the land that I'm going to give to y'all. So Moses gets the spies and says, y'all go spy out the land that the Lord is going to give to us because the Lord said, go spy out the land that the Lord is going to give to us. Now, that sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? The land that God is going to give. If somebody tell me, Brother Jaden, Pastor, go to the dealership. And spy out the car that God is going to give to you. I'm not counting money if he said God is going to give it to me. So I get to the dealership, they closed. I'm not worried about them being closed because I don't need them open to spy. So I'm not even, I mean, I'm going to look at what's coming. Hey, I mean... So, the, the, these spies are supposed to, that's all they're supposed to do. Go look and see what, where you're going. This is where you're going. Right. Then he said, get some of the food, see what it tastes like, yep. all of that, so you can come back and get the, 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 get the rest of them excited. Yeah. Taste these grapes. These grapes is from the land we about to get. Yeah. Yeah. Man, these folks. <laughs> look at what happened. <laughs> humans Numbers 13 27 after they came back they went 40 days came back after 40 days and they told him and said we came unto the land whether thou sendest us Moses and surely it was flowing with milk and honey and this is the fruit of it here's some grapes <laughs> nevertheless the people be strong that dwell in that in the land. And the cities are walled and very great, tall. And then moreover, we saw the Nephilim. The Nephilim. That's who the children of Anak are. Anakis. 
we saw the Nephilim. The Amalekites was in the land of the south. And the Hittites was over there too. And the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. Oh, and then the dark-skinned ones. The Canaanites. The hood. That was a hood. In the promised land. And the Canaanites. Oh, the Hebrews. They're going to be so mad. Oh, God. But it's the truth. <laughs> the hood was over by the sea. And by the coast of Jordan. And everybody's like, what? Nephilim, what? What? So Caleb stilled the people and said, y'all calm down. Let us go up at once and possess it. For we will be able to overcome it. Why did he say that? Because God told us to go spy out the land that he is going to give us. So if he going to give us the land, let's go get it. Caleb said, let's go get it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we Ooh, is it like church it's the first church church <sighs> and they brought a what bad news mm, mm. they brought an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. Did it eat y'all up? Eat it up, the people that's there. And it gets worse. You notice how the story is getting worse and more scary? As they keep going. That's how, that's how folks do, though. That's how that gossip does. Them talebearers, them tattlers. It's going to get worse and worse if they keep talking. Because they're going off your facial expressions. So if you ain't giving some. <laughs> that little rascals would. That's what they're going for. So they'll just keep adding stuff. <laughs> yeah. And so it gets worse. All the people that we saw that we saw in it are men of great stature. At first you just said it was one group of them. You named all the other groups, then you named one group and said that they were the, the, the giants, the Nephilim. Now everybody's a Nephilim. All the people we saw. <laughs> and then we saw the giants, the sons of Anak. Okay, you just said that. Which come of the giants. So now we see the giants' giants. The giants' kids are giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. And all the congregation at this point, now, now, now they got them, lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night. Oh, God done brought us out here to kill us in this wilderness. Should have left us in Egypt. Why are we out here dying in this wilderness? You know, because I heard that Moses, you know, paying attention to this dark-skinned woman he got from the other side of the mountain. And if he hadn't got her, then he would be able to focus on where we're supposed to go. So it's really Moses' fault. And that Aaron, he act one way when Moses ain't around. But when Moses is around, we saw that. We've seen that. So something is wrong with the leadership. We need to elect new leaders. <laughs> I know I'm preaching. He ain't got to say nothing. God told the children of Israel that they would go into a land flowing with milk and honey. Did he not tell them that? 
You're going in the land flowing with milk and honey. Yeah, but there's John. You're going in the land. Didn't I flood the earth and rid the earth of giants before? And you worried about some giants walking around in a land I said I'm going to give you? But God told the children of Israel that they would go into a land flowing with milk and honey. But because of bad news, many of them did not get to see it. That's sad because they still went. That's why bad news can't stop good. It can't stop good. It only stops those that are listening to it. And it stopped thousands of them. And they died in the wilderness. And their children stepped over, the Bible said, their carcasses. To walk into the promised land. All the ones that doubted and listened to the bad news. <laughs> Don't nobody bring me what? No bad news. But because of bad news, many of them didn't get to see it. Bad news from the spies turned their hearts. And they murmured against God. And his chosen vessel, Moses. The one God appointed. Remember the one where God said, okay, you don't have to listen to Moses. Listen to me. And God came down in the camp. And everybody was so scared. Please go back. We'll listen. We'll listen. We sorry. We'll listen. Them same people. Now they don't know to listen. Remember the one where Miriam and Aaron decided God can use us too just as much as he's using Moses. Remember? And her hand withered and turned leprous. And the Bible said that she had to stay outside of the camp. His own sister. This is the type of behavior that what? Upsets God. Ooh, I'm preaching. Oh, I feel it in my. <laughs> I look at the young folk, they're like, no, not Gizzle. <laughs> they were so distracted by the bad report that they forgot what? How much is all? They forgot everything. All that God had previously done for them. Let's put this in perspective. This is the God that had flies, locusts, river blood, firstborn dead, all of that, and protected his Israel from all of it. Complete darkness. The Bible said the kind of darkness that kills people. It said you can feel the darkness. It was so dark. And his people had light. Y'all had light looking out into darkness that was alive. And you forgot it all over some bad news. These are the things that bad news can do and what it did to them. Bad news caused them to forget the promise that God gave them. They forgot what God told them. You're the chosen people. You forgot you're chosen you're afraid of unchosen folks yeah. that worship false gods. Yeah. You worship the true and living God and you're afraid. You forgot the promise. He said he was going to give you a land flowing in milk and honey. And then you came back and said, yeah, that's the land that's flowing with milk and honey. But... Numbers 14 and 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be? How long will it be earth? They believe me. For all the signs which I have showed among them. He said, How long are they going to do this after all I've done and shown them? He showed them himself. But it just takes bad news. Bad news made them question leadership. 
Even though they were saved because of Moses' leadership. You questioned the one that heard from God to lift his rod and part the sea. He heard from God. You asked him, what is your God going to do? We're right here in front of this sea. The Pharaoh them about to come get us. What is God going to do? God told Moses, get your staff. He listened to Moses, did what God said, and saved all of their lives. All of their lives. And that's the one you question it. Now, something's wrong with it. Something's wrong with Moses. Because you're scared. The bad news made them question leadership. Even though they were saved under Moses' leadership. They were there right then to make that decision because of Moses. Because Moses did what God said and got them delivered. Numbers 14 and 4. And they said one to another, forget Moses, let us make a captain. Let us elect somebody else as if they elected Moses. Who elected Moses? So you're going to pick a captain in place of the one that God chose? And the worst part is, you said you followed him because God chose him. But now he's, you're going to just all get together and pick somebody else and let us return where? <laughs> they wilded. You go, you going to elect the captain and then go back? You know, God is like, there is no going back. Because you didn't went forward too far. You go forward that far, the only way back is death. Can I keep preaching? Now? Hey. Bad news caused them to, man, I'm preaching. I've just felt something. PJ, uh-oh. Watch out now, wait. <laughs> Bad news caused them to wander aimlessly in the wilderness because they refused to trust in the plan of the Lord. Land of milk and honey is right there where that, <laughs> that, that camera is. They right here walking in circles. Can't get there. Wandered around until they died. 40 years. Can't get there because of bad news. It's right there. Can't get there. God told them spies, for 40 days, y'all were gone for 40 days. He said, for each day, you're going to wander in the wilderness for a year. And one by one, you're going to drop dead. But the ones that came back with the bad report, he said, you're not going to get 40. You're going to die right now. And he sent a plague on all of them, and they all died. So, so the bad news bring us, all y'all dying. Then the folks that listen to you going to slow death. It's going to be a slow death. Then their children going to walk over the dead corpses into the land that is right there. Because it's right there. Man, I'm trying to get to the promised land. I don't know where you going. I don't know who you've been listening to. I don't know who's been bringing you bad news. I'm trying to get to the promised land. I done come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. He never failed me yet. Oh, I can't turn around. Cause them to wander aimlessly. Numbers 14 and 23. Surely they shall not see the land which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoke me see it. Now what is the provoke me part? The ones that went against the one I picked to lead them. 
So anybody that goes against who I picked, they ain't going. We can't choose who God picks. Bad news was the death of many. <laughs> Look, oh, this is the dumbest part of the whole story. It was the death of many because a group of them decided to defy Moses and take the land. So they said, I don't care what you say. I don't care what you say God said. God said, we ain't going. We going. We going to go to this land. And the Bible said it like this. The Ark of the Covenant and Moses stayed. That's all I needed it to say. That means God and Moses ain't with you. So they stayed in the camp and watched them. We're going to take the land. Yeah. <laughs> Numbers 14. 44. Ain't going to do it without the leader. <laughs> they presumed, the Bible said. <laughs> presumed. Boy, the Bible be using some word. But they presumed to go up unto the hilltop. Nevertheless, the ark of the covenant of the Lord and Moses departed not out of the camp. The Bible said then, <laughs> Amalek and them <laughs> and the hood brothers, <laughs> they all got to looking like sharpening their swords and stuff like, oh, here comes a good meal. <laughs> then the Amalekites got good kosher. It's a kosher meal. We're going to get, we eating good. We're going to eat good tonight. The giants came down and Canaanites which dwelt in, in that hill. And the Bible said it, they smote them. That's the Bible's word for whoop. When you get smoked, you got whooped. Whooped. Smote them and then discomfited them. <laughs> they got towed up even unto horror. I mean, just go go without the leader. That bad news, man. Woo. Bad news causes people to lose faith in the promise. What God has promised will come to pass as long as we believe on Him. Amen. Numbers 14 and 8. If the Lord delighted us, then he will bring us into the land and give it to us, said Caleb, a land which floweth with milk and honey. If the Lord delight in us, if he's pleased with us, if he likes the way we're handling things. Bad news can turn us around. Mm. And make us desire to go back to where we came from. Ooh, bad news. Make you go back. When you said God told you to go forward. But bad news can make you go back. Nah. Where you came from. Just like the Israelites desired to return to Egypt. Numbers 14 and 2. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we have died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness? And I can just hear the Lord saying, Either way, you're gonna die. <laughs> you said it. Summary! This is a good one, man. Oh, this was a good one to me. Oh, long summary. The internet, social media, and news stations do not profit from good news. They'll show you, on an hour broadcast, they'll show you 58 minutes of everything bad. I mean the deaths from the plague, the, 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 the murders in the hood. The murders in the good part of town. Yeah. 
the murders among the whites, the blacks, and then the Hispanics. They show you all the numbers, the teen pregnancies, everybody pregnant, the, the shooter in the school, everybody just shooting up the school. They'll show you all of that, and in the last eight minutes, look at this little dog. He's, he only has three legs, but he's a spry little puppy. Look at him. <laughs> and then it go off. Then the news go off. After an hour, you in the bathtub with a razor. <laughs> like you gonna see the little dog and be like. <laughs> There's hope. There's hope. He can do that. With three legs. Imagine what I can do with two. The internet, social media. <laughs> They profit from, they don't profit from good news. They keep showing good news, people gonna turn it off. There's no shock in good news. One student got an A. What? All the students failed. That's what everybody wanna see. Really, where is that? Baltimore. Sorry, Kirby. Good news is only profitable when it's about bad people. Y'all, Megan the Stallion gave some money to the local hospital. Good news about a bad person. She probably sent all the dudes in there with something. <laughs> she keeping the hospital going. I mean, the penicillin supply is just truckloads <laughs> I ain't telling you nothing that she didn't say in her own soul But good news is only profitable when it's about bad people or against those that, I mean, or those that are against Christ. So if somebody that has fought against Christ do something good, they'll show that. Most news outlets only promote bad news, frightening reports, shocking information, and fear mongering. Yeah. They know and have done studies to prove that showing these things will give them control over people's decision making. <laughs> showing them good is not going to get them control over people's decision making. Bad. Showing them bad, bad reports. Look what the bad report did to the children of Israel. Changed everything. Took the promise of God away. Bad news. Had them talking crazy. Bad news. Changed the way they was thinking. Took their faith away. Bad news. Yeah. Bad, look at somebody say, bad reports. Bad reports. Change, people. change people. That's what the devil wants to do when he brings you a bad report. Want to change you. Turn you into somebody else. Turn you into the person that gave you the bad report. Even people that say they are full of God's spirit are afraid to gather together, shake hands, and go to church because of bad reports. You're not going to church because of a bad report. You got to watch it from home because of a bad report. You're watching it on Zoom with a mask on because of a bad report. But you was in Walmart? Costco, Sam's Club, Ubering, lifting, but a bad report. The God that has delivered them and done many miraculous things for them is forgotten because of bad news. 
You forgot God healed you of cancer. Healed you from a stroke. But a bad report came. Folks getting sick at church. The devil knows that if he can get God's people to watch, ingest, and focus on bad news, they will eventually forget the good news of Jesus Christ. Yep. They will doubt God, his leadership, and their faith altogether over some bad news. <laughs> Joshua and Caleb brought back good news and tried to share it. But the people clamored and murmured together to the point of anger in God and caused themselves to miss out on the promise because they couldn't shut up. We cannot allow distractions of bad news to make us miss out on what God has promised us in this hour. Amen. So many even in the church use their platform and social media pages to promote nothing but bad news about the church, church people, and church leaders. They are just like the ones that went into the land and saw their own demise without considering the one that sent them to spy. If God sent you to spy, you don't think he knew what was there? And if in his orders to go spy, he said, go look at the land that I'm going to give you, did he not give you provision? That's what Caleb was trying to act off of. Hey, he told us to go look at the land that he's about to give us. Let's go! They are just like the ones that went into the land and saw their own demise without considering the one that sent them to spot. God had already done miracles for them. So why would they doubt him? Why would they doubt him? It's because it's easier to believe the bad and accept it than to believe the good and trust it. When people allow bad news to fester in their hearts, they will eventually become fearful, which leads to doubt. This births unbelief and then reprobates. Turn off the bad Look at somebody say, turn off the bad news. Stop watching the bad news. Turn off the bad news. Amen. Some folk want to be your friend just to tell you bad stuff. Turn them off too. I don't want to hear that. We're going into a great time in our lifetime in the body of Christ. I don't want to hear you. Woo, if you don't get on with that bad news. Stop allowing it to saturate and fill your heart. God is still in control. And he would not bring us this far to leave us. Amen. Just like the children of Israel, we have seen his hand and we know what he is capable of. All of his promises are yea and amen. He will do what he said. And this is the good news that we must continue to believe until he comes. Amen. Amen. Good news. Don't bring me no bad news. Isaiah 52 and 7. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings what? Good news. Mm. How stinky are the feet <laughs> of them that's always bringing bad. Your feet stink. Your feet stink because your soul stink. The spirit stink. Your words stink. And your breath stinks. You're just stinking. Because you don't have no good news. Is it something good? How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news. Who publishes what? Put out peace. Who brings good news of happiness. Who publishes salvation. Who says to Zion, your God what? Reigns. You know what it means if he reigns? It means he's in control. Yeah. And if he's in control, we don't have to worry. Yeah. Amen. Everyone stand to your feet. Man, this message blessed me so much. 
Oh, if you can receive it. Sometimes it's a spirit. It's a negative spirit. And you're not even at fault. It was placed on you. It was spoken over you. You were raised under conditions that were negative. Or you were raised under someone that constantly talked negative. So bad news sounds okay to you. You're not as sensitive as you need to be to bad news. You need to be so sensitive that it sounds like someone scratching on a chalkboard. With their bare nails. It should make you just, oh, no, I can't hear that, brother. I don't need to hear that. That's bad news. Maybe you got around somebody. Maybe somebody was in your life that placed that spirit in you or put that spirit around you. And now the bad news has you locked up. I want to pray that off you today. Whoever it is, come on. Come on, just come on, man. It's church. Yeah, pray it off of you. I want to entertain it. I want to hear it. I don't want to like it. I want it off of me. I, no, no more bad news. No, no, not entertaining. I'm not listening. No, 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 no. I'm serious. You got to be able to do that. No, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I need it off. Good news. I need good news. Good news. Good news. I want my feet beautiful. Good news. Tell me the good news, man. Okay, you just came. Tell me the bad news. Now tell me the good news. What's the good news? What good news you got? What you got? Good news. It's a negative society. That's what it is. Yeah, negative. Amen. Anyone else? Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this message. Thank you, Father God, for this message. Thank you, Lord, for the truth of this message. Thank you, Father God, that you are good and the news of you is good and the way you do things is good. Father God, forgive us, Lord, for enjoying bad news, allowing bad news to distract us from truth, from all that you've done for us. Father God, all that you've provided. Father God, all the things we said you did Father God, and bad news comes and makes us rethink all of that. Maybe I shouldn't have. Maybe I didn't. Maybe it wasn't God. Maybe that's bad news. Father God, so I pray right now that any spirit, any cantankerous, doubtful spirit, Father God, that was placed on any one of us, it be removed right now. Spirit of cynicism, becoming a cynic, seeing everything through a questioning eye. Seeing everything through a negative scope. Seeing everything through a doubtful hue. Father God, break that spirit off. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We want good news. We want to be good news carriers. We want to be good news speakers. We want to respond to good news. We want to bring good news. Father God, we want to bask in your goodness. Help us, Lord. Everyone lift your hands. Father God, help us in this area as a fellowship so that we don't bring bad news to each other in here. We don't know what kind of week they had. We don't know what they're going through. We don't know what happened in their home. We don't know what happened in their childhood. So God, how dare we bring them doubt and make them feel a way about the fellowship that they've chosen to plant themselves in. So help us, Father God, to not be bearers of bad news but help us God to focus on what is good because good is going to keep coming it's going to keep going good will not stop if bad takes us away from the good the good will continue we want to be with the good I want to continue with the good so help us in this area Lord in Jesus name we pray Amen. Amen. Good news. Come on, hug somebody and say, I got some good news. And I don't have any bad news. Come on. Tell somebody I got some good news. Good news. Hallelujah. I won't be distracted. 
by the bad news. Hallelujah. Not going to be left behind. I'm not missing the promise. I'm not dying in the wilderness. And I'm not getting ahead of the leadership and dying in the land before it's mine. Hallelujah. Good news. Good news. Man, I preached in here today, didn't I, Denise? I know I did. You know what I tell me? I heard it. I heard myself. That was a blessing. Good gracious. Uh, somebody should have been shouting and dancing. Y'all just, yeah, yeah, that was good, Pastor. Mm -hmm. We'll see what you got next week. Come on in. <laughs>